Hi everyone, thanks for tuning in. It's no secret that high performing women face intense pressure throughout their careers. These women seem to be doing it all, having it all, a family, a high powered career, children, going to yoga, having a social life. Are these women super women or do they also struggle with um, balancing act, um, stress, and maybe even anxiety. So to jump into this conversation with me, I'm so pleased to introduce you to one of our own local female leaders, Rebecca Ripa, Executive Vice President of Clinical Support and Performance at the University Health Network, um, and also formerly of Hamilton Health Sciences and St. Joe's in leadership roles. Rebecca is a 30-year veteran in the healthcare sector in Ontario. She has a passion for learning, coaching, and promoting wellness in the workplace, and she holds an MBA and BA from McMaster University. So please welcome today with me, Rebecca Ripa. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much for being here, Rebecca. Um, you know, I, I interned at St. Joe's way back in the day when you were in executive uh, in an executive leadership role, and uh, we've sort of stayed in touch. And you're just a great leader and a mentor, and I'm just so thrilled to have this opportunity to chat with you um, so today. And, and we're going to talk about a really important subject, I think. So to get right into it, do women have anxiety in in C-suite positions? For sure. Which was shocking to me um, because we recently went for coffee and when we were chatting, I shared with you um, something new for me that I was experiencing some intense anxiety at work uh, and I thought that was because maybe I just wasn't good enough or maybe I wasn't going to be cut out for senior leadership roles because you know I was really feeling the pressure and I was shocked to hear that other women and other women in C-suite positions also fear have felt this for sure so I just want to hear a little yeah. bit about your story and maybe any any times anxiety has popped up for you totally so I I think it's common and I think it's more common than you think and I think one of the things I've learned over my career is everybody's got something going on mm -hmm. and and for the most part um, successful people women particularly they they mask it well Yes. And so a lot of the times you don't know it until you're kind of in the throes of it. And I have found over my career, I love mentoring young people. I love mentoring uh, people throughout their careers. And almost always we get to a point at where we talk about the fact that people feel anxiety. And it's overwhelming sometimes. And sometimes it's even paralyzing. Mm -hmm. And so it is important to acknowledge it. But I think the... the, the um, the biggest relief is when you realize that you're not the only one who's had it. Yes, yes. And there's there's a phenomenon in the literature called high performance anxiety, and it's not it's not a clinical paralyzing anxiety. Mm -hmm. So I, I want to acknowledge that there are different types of yeah. anxiety, but high performance anxiety is probably what fueled us all through school. It probably, we were probably all type A, mm -hmm. we were probably all worriers, we probably all did well at school, we worried about exams, and as life got bigger, we used the same coping skills, study more, work harder, uh, be more intense, be more passionate, be more loyal, and as life comes at you, eventually it's too much. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And you feel overwhelmed by it. And I think, I, you know, when I look back, there's probably many times over, over my life where I felt those at major transitions. And in, in some cases, it manifests itself like headaches or, or um, uh, I think, high blood pressure or, or stomach issues. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, it, you don't even see it coming. And it comes at you and... and there's really nothing physically wrong, and you think, okay, well, what's going on? And mm -hmm. you start to realize you're, you're kind of imposing this on yourself. Yes. And you start, you really have to start to peel back the layers and understanding, you know, what happened, because it does come at you, and you don't, you don't even know what happened. Yeah, and it's a scary and unexpected thing, and, you know, unfortunately, we go to the negative first, like, what's wrong with me? Why am I not able to cope? Um, but there's positives and negatives to having anxiety, and I know you you, totally. you you shared a little bit about that yeah. with me. Yeah, sure. So so I think um, the energy and the nervousness that caused you to want to do well on exams mm -hmm. and do well in school and and it looks like ambition in many cases. It's probably fueled more by fear of failure than it is by ambition. Interesting. Yeah. But those that energy is what that passion comes from, and I I've often likened it. Uh, um, 
uh, to our superpower. Mm -hmm. So it's our superpower, and if you don't learn how to control it, if you don't learn how to manage it, it ends up controlling you. So that energy, for instance, is what allows you to work long days. It allows you to be able to take on multiple tasks. Right. But it's also that energy that when there's nothing to fill in it, so when you have downtime and you feel that anxiety, it's often because you have that energy that's not focused in on some activity. And uh, many of us have sort of those obsessive um, things that they do when they have downtime. And mine is like cleaning grout in the floors. And my, <laughs> my husband always says to me, oh, we're at that point, are we? And I say, yes. But it's, it, it is about uh, some people jog, some people yeah. uh, do yoga, some people do meditation, but it's a way of controlling that energy when it's not channeled into something that's productive. Well, and you need to escape. And, and you know, I've, I've, I've read a little bit since we've talked, and they do say that, you know, folks with high performance anxiety, they have a, a lot of trouble, and, and I would be one of them too, shutting off. shutting off. So, you know, you're finally out of work and you think, okay, great, this is a great time to relax. But instead of relaxing, you ruminate over what else is going on or that you didn't get to all of your other chores. And it's just list after list of disappointment and failure that we sort of put ourselves through, mm -hmm. that we can't actually just take a break, watch some Netflix, mm -hmm. like um, that, that, that sort of thing. So I'm not sure if you have any yeah, comments sure. on that. So, so I mean, we're in control of ourselves. Ultimately, that has to be the end state in which we control it. And, and you know, the biology of that is your, your, your nervous system is, is on a loop yep. and it can't shut off. And so that's why running and yoga and meditation and all of those, those activities, music, they're all put in place to try to shut your system down so you can focus it and slow it down. Right. And, or the opposite is you find some high high. Uh, energy activity that makes that energy um, feel right in the context. So mm -hmm. running, jumping, jumping on a trampoline is supposed to be really good for anxiety because it, it starts to match the energy with the activity. My heart's racing, but that's okay because I just jogged. So that makes sense to my brain that those two go together. So you either have to find a way to channel it mm -hmm. or you have to find a way to slow it down. And so that's why you can't relax and just shut it off. But but ultimately, that's what you learn over the, over your lifetime is that you have to be in control of that. And it's interesting because I've listened to some um, interviews recently with Jan Arden and mm -hmm. Lady Gaga, and you know everybody's talking about mental health yep. and wellness, and um, they they all say that the gift that they get as they get older is they learn to say no. They learn to do the things they want to do, and they learn how to slow their mind down and enjoy life. And I think that that's kind of the key. Mm -hmm. And lots of times young women are experiencing that explosion of activity right. in their early life. And I was saying earlier that the, the, if you could give the gift of knowing what you know to be able to control that in your younger years, it would be so much better. And there's a few things I want to unpack there probably in, in the next half with the panel. We've got one minute left. Can you just share with us your career journey, just because I think it's so important for everybody to realize what an amazing woman is sitting here, um, if, you, if you don't mind. So uh, I've been in healthcare for 30 years. I graduated with my MBA. And um, you know I, I, what I tell um, students coming out is have a plan, even if it's not a good plan mm -hmm. or the right plan, just have a plan. And uh, I thought that you know I would work in healthcare for three to five years, and then I thought, uh, jokingly, I'd be a CEO. I really thought that until I got into the world realizing that you need to do a lot of work before you can get into some of those leadership roles. I worked with great institutions that had wonderful cultures. I had great mentors along the way, and I had lots of opportunity to grow in all my roles um, in Hamilton. So I would say find a good group, Find a, an organization that has a great culture and, and grow with it. Thank you so much, Rebecca, for coming. So we're going to take a quick break, and we'll be right back. I am Larry Diani, and I'm the host of In the Hall, Cable 14's Community Affairs Program, which always brings you a focus on important issues happening in our community. We are during a pandemic period, and I'm hoping that you're doing everything that will keep you safe. But I do want you to know that we have new content. We bring you the decision makers to talk about issues in our communities. Please join me. COVID-19 is a serious public health threat. All Canadians must act now to reduce the spread. 
protect yourself and others, especially those with medical conditions and older adults. Wash your hands often. Avoid touching your face. Cough or sneeze into your arm. And stay home as much as possible. Now is the time to act, and we must act together. A message from the Government of Canada. Now, more than ever, it's vital to care. Donate now to support Hamilton Health Sciences Foundation's COVID-19 response. Your contribution ensures that our hospitals have the tools and resources they need at this critical time. Make a real difference today. During this difficult time, many families are struggling with food insecurity. Food for Kids is responding to children and families impacted by COVID-19. Grocery gift cards are being mailed, and where a family can't visit a grocery store, we are delivering food to homes. Food for Kids is committed to ensuring no child in our community goes hungry. We're all in this together. Visit foodforkids.ca. Welcome back. We're joined by two more professionals. We have Karen Bellow, the CEO of Shared Services West, and Sarah Wright, a social worker, both from Hamilton. Thank you both so much for being here today. Thank you for it's great us. to be here. Yeah. So we're continuing the conversation on anxiety in the workplace and sort of destigmatizing mm -hmm. it and kind of mm -hmm. putting to light that many women uh, all different career levels are facing this and you know it's okay and it doesn't mean that you're not good enough um, or you're not able to cope with situations. It's just something that we all experience. So um, why did we not realize this before? Why do you think this hasn't been really brought up? Why do you think there's a bit of shame around this? Well, that's just it. It is shame. You don't want to acknowledge that you have a problem. Yeah, they're not perfect. And you want to set yourself up for advancement in your career. Mm -hmm. And so you don't want to give anybody any reason to stop your advancement. You think that they will if you come up and say, you know what, that was a little too much for me, I'm kind of stressed out. Stress at one point used to be, you know, a word that people sort of say, oh yeah, stress. But it's yeah. a real phenomenon, and thank heavens we're talking about it now, and we're putting things into place in workplaces to help people deal with the challenges that they have. Yeah, no, I, I would agree. It's like I think it's great that we've we've shed so much attention onto, um, you know, anxiety and mental health, which is a whole other uh, topic in itself, but um, I think it's really, really important. I'm not sure if it, I, either of you have any points about that. I mean, my yeah. company is putting in a lot of policies on it, and I think it's really great. And I know Rebecca had mentioned this just as we were chatting about that external validation and how we're always looking, you know, outwardly at the people around us mm -hmm. for, you know, how we're doing. But I also think part of that is, you know, we're getting all this positive feedback from the people around us, like, oh, you, you know, you work 20 hours a week, you, you went to the gym every day, um, and your house, house is still clean, and you, know, you're, you went out for dinner with your friends, like, oh, you're doing really well, like, you're really succeeding in life. And then you're like, oh, okay, you know, even though I'm feeling so overwhelmed and stressed out, I must be doing okay, right? So there's also that piece, too. Or it makes you think maybe that, oh, I guess I should be doing this all the time when really I'm at the edge. Yeah. I mean, I definitely get to that level where I'm like, oh, I, I need to stop something, but then I'll get some affirmation that, oh, this is so great you're doing all this. And I'm like, how am I going to continue to keep this up? And you put this insane pressure on yourself. And there's some superstitious behavior in that. So you think because you did all of those things, all of those things led to the, that success. Mm -hmm. And so now you have to do all of those things and now add yoga at the end of the day. Yeah. And now you feel like a failure because you can't get to yoga. And, and instead of sort of peeling back about, you know, what, what do you want? And I think I've said this to you before, ultimately you have to come, wh whatever the, whatever's in front of you, you have to make choices. And if you let the workplace make the choices for you, they will have you working 20 hours and mm -hmm. doing mm -hmm. more. And you have to put those boundaries. And, and then as leaders in the workplace, you have to help set those boundaries so other people can be successful in it. So until we start to change that culture and we let people set boundaries around being able to you know, work one evening so they can go to cross country and watch their child run at noon on Friday um, and make, it, make them feel that that's okay to do yeah. that, 
until those things are in place, it's always going to feel like you're never good enough. You're not able to do it all. Mm -hmm. But it's a systemic culture issue in organizations. So we can all identify those companies where everybody's running on empty all the time. Mm -hmm. And there is no outlet for you as an individual if you can't keep up and you do feel like a failure. Think back to the first time you had a panic attack. Like it was the worst experience you ever had and you didn't really understand what was going on. Mm -hmm. So probably all of us here have at one point sought out some professional help to get an understanding mm -hmm. of the biology of what's going on. You talked about that. And then we went through the process of taking courses, understanding how to manage this, but you're still at the same time in an organization that's not supporting you, so you still feel conflicted. You don't feel like you're getting forward. And Rebecca, you made a really good point to say, find the right organization that will support you through this. Thankfully, more and more organizations yeah. are. And, uh, you know, as I've matured, I've m learned to manage my anxiety. I couldn't have done it as well as a young person. But now I, I can help others as well. So in our organization, you're having an anxious day, you bring your dog to work if that makes you feel comfortable. And th there's small things, but it, it really helps. Mm -hmm. Any other tips while we're on that about how you handle your anxiety when it surfaces for you? So, so one of the things I think that that everyone needs to know is that you're not you're not the only one that's ever dealt with it, and that um, that it it will you will get through it mm -hmm. and once you've had that worst episode you won't ever have it again because you won't let yourself have it again right. you'll start to realize the triggers you'll start to realize that you know it's probably not important that i do that element you take that out you mm -hmm. preserve some time for yourself you learn you learn how to set boundaries that help you cope with it you turn off the news if it's a trigger you don't go on social media if it's making you not feel good so you start to learn that and you won't go back there again. And I often describe it as you're climbing a little bit out of a hole. Sometimes you slip back in because it's your nature. But you, once you get out, you, you won't fall back in again because you just won't let yourself. You'll start to learn how to, how to develop that. And unfortunately, that takes time and maturity. Yeah. And don't you wish you could collapse that. But some things you have to go through and learn that you have the strength to control that yourself. And it, you have to accept it. Mm -hmm. This is the way you're wired. It's mm -hmm. your superpower. It is. And so work on ways to channel it. And I have to say that finding a trusted colleague that I could have this conversation with at 11 o'clock at night when I was feeling like I was spiraling out of control mm -hmm. was so helpful for me. And it gave me that, I don't know, like there, were, there was a group of us and we all had this problem and we could all sort it out because at any given time we were at different levels of anxiety and the other person could help us through. Yeah. Something that you mentioned earlier that I wanted to touch back on was that, you know, sometimes we're seen as ambitious women because mm. um, I, I would classify myself as ambitious, but then there's other moments where it's not ambition that's driving me, it's the anxiety that's got it in hold of me and I feel like I have to execute or take on all these things, and I'm just in maybe a bit of a spiral about it. Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't really know, mm -hmm. but I'm not sure if, if anybody else has felt similarly or has any comments to that effect of when anxiety is driving you more so than ambition. Well, do you have somebody close to you who can say, "Oh boy, you, oh boy, where are you headed right now?" That's true. And I catch just, you. Yeah. When say you, no. Right. You know, mm -hmm. you'll notice your behaviors are starting to change. You talked about cleaning the grout mm -hmm. and your husband saying, okay, that's where we are right now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So is there somebody close to you who can help you identify that and can you know, use the phrase, walk you away from the yellow tape because you're moving yourself into a crisis zone. Because mm -hmm. it goes back to what you also said about, you know, you think that it's a superstition, you have to do all these activities and keep doing them so you can, obviously I'm in a phase of my career where I'm aspiring to move up the ladder. So I feel like if I, at some points, if I drop anything, I'm limiting my ability for how high I can climb. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. part of us maybe just illuminating that that's not true. And then, I, so I would actually go back and say that one of the one of the things that I reflect on is is climbing the goal. Mm -hmm. 
So is being fulfilled in your work life the goal? And, and maybe it is. I mean, you, you have to set that yourself. But we have, we can't, we're a generation of, of uh, women who were told you can have it all. And I think the realization I had in my 30s, which, you know, you barely remember your 30s. You're so busy, uh, was that you can't have it all. You can't. You have to make choices along the way. Mm -hmm. And it's that, that sense that if you're not trying to have it all, if you're not trying to climb, like the, it's okay to be happy in a role for a couple of years without trying to climb if you're working on some other element of your life and you want to just, you just want to be able to do good work and you want to go to work every day and you want to have fun. Uh, I can't underestimate the, um, or overestimate the, uh, Karen's point about having a good network making sure that you use your friends and, and have fun and laugh mm -hmm. because those are the kinds of moments that get you through the other type where you, where you want to shut the door and think about, do I want to do this or not? And being a mom is okay to be a mom. Okay. It's okay to say, I need to be home to have dinner with my children. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We're so lucky we have all these choices, so we have to make them available. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, and I and would mirror that. I think part of it is, you know, I'm constantly looking at my goals and I and I separate them like these are the goals I have professionally and you know these are the tasks I need to do to get to those goals professionally but I also have personal goals and it's okay to have personal goals outside of your work mm -hmm. that are important to you that you know maybe I'm not doing an obligatory goal at work you know that my boss has asked me to do maybe I'm saying no to that because you know something over here in my professional life is more important so I'm gonna work on tasks associated with that and carving yeah. out some time for you yeah yeah and I know we've talked a lot about you know having mentors and support people in our lives and you know a partner that you know can notice when you're sort of hitting that point but I think also just you know being able to know yourself and 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 doing some self-talk like for me I I have a lot of moments of what's called cognitive dissonance so there's two opposing truths right so mm -hmm. I have this truth that you know I, I, if I say no to this person, you know, I'm, I'm going to fail and I'm not going to, you know, or if I say no to this task, you know, I'm not going to do everything that I should be doing. But also, if I don't say no to this task, I might burn out and not be able to do my work. Mm -hmm. So, so making sure, you know, those two things may be true, but how do we, you know. And we're so hard on ourselves. Yeah. Like that, just like hearing you say that's like, oh, I, like I. I'm there often with you, like yeah. experiencing that myself. And it's like, it's so brutal when you hear someone else saying, it's like, oh my gosh, like, yeah, take that off your plate. Like, mm -hmm. it's not a big deal. You know, we're all, you know, striving and, and working and, and doing all these positive things. And yet it's just never enough. And we're just hypercritical. Yeah. Um, how, how have you seen anxiety pop up in the workplace, either, you know, yourself or you've seen others? Like, what are sort of some of those behaviors that people tend to um, you off. see panic attacks. That's what you see. So, so they manifest. And Karen said, you know, we've we've all had our version of it, and it and it's an it's avoidance behavior. So when mm -hmm. when that anxiety hits, it's if you have the luxury to shut your door, then you can shut your door. If you have, uh, if you're if you need to escape somehow, but you see it as avoidance behavior, and that's those are the early signs that you start to see that somebody's struggling is they're avoiding, they're and and lots of times people take it personally. I know a lot of my friends would took it personally like why why don't you want to connect with me and it's it's about avoidance and that's a that's the first trigger so when I see that people are avoiding avoiding going avoiding social events avoiding um, activities at work then I start to wonder and and I've learned to start some of those conversations with are you okay Mm -hmm. mm. And and opening up that to see if someone says no, I'm not okay. Yeah, and if they don't, trying to pry it out of them. I've also seen where there's a change in performance. So somebody who has always delivered great results, all of a sudden they're not, and they're sporadically here one day, not the next. They go for a week, then they're. So mm -hmm. it, it, there's a pattern of things starting to change for them and trying to start that conversation can sometimes be difficult. But I've found that by sharing my story first, it opens the door for them to right. ask questions. And maybe they'll look like they're asking on behalf of somebody else, but then you can keep the conversation going. And I've said to a few people recently, I need you to take some time away. And give them permission. Sometimes they need to hear I that. I need you to take some time away. This will be good for you. 
So we have like 20 seconds left. Rapid fire, any final words of wisdom for those maybe experiencing anxiety or having about a moment of anxiety of either how to get through it or just a piece of wisdom you want to impart? Talk to somebody about it. Mm-hmm. We've all sought professional help, so do that. Yep. Mm-hmm. And you're going to get through it. You will. You totally Reach will. out. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, love that, love that. Okay, thank you so much, ladies, for being here. Great conversation and really important topic. So thanks for sharing and uh, being vulnerable with me. Thank you. Great day.